Hey everybody, it's Pax. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be kicking off a three-part custom campaign, The War of the Worlds by The Beard. You probably know The Beard as the creator who did Alice in Wonderland, Cyclopean Foundations, and most recently a four-part Jumanji campaign, which I'm pretty stoked to try out soon. But for this video, I'm taking a look at War of the Worlds. It's one of his first designs that he put out there, and specifically I'm doing this one because it's short, it's only three scenarios, and I really wanted to just like try a couple of scenarios. Um, out in the kind of same speed you'd be able to do a Night of the Zealot campaign, but to be honest with you, Night of the Zealot's kind of boring, and I want to try out something a little new. Um, so, specifically, I'm trying out a couple of Rogue cards and Guardian cards in Finn and Roland. Before I continue any further, though, I do want to do a quick, you know, cheesy like, comment, and subscribe request for the channel. You know, last time I did it, uh, it actually was like the biggest spike in subscribers I've had outside of the Tabletop Simulator tutorial. So, I mean, I guess that kind of works. But more than that, what I'd really like for you to do is head over to my new Twitter account, uh, Crypt Drill, uh, in which I am editing um, shit posts from the Drill Twitter account onto Arkham cards for what I consider to be humorous effects. Um, you know, for, for me, they're a lot of fun to make. I understand that maybe the humor is not everyone's cup of tea, but personally, they make me laugh pretty hard. And um, I love to share laughs when I can. So the link to the Twitter account is going to be in the description. It's just, I think it's twitter.com slash crypt drill, which is, you know, play on words for crypt chill. If you enjoy that kind of thing. So like I said, a mix of rogue and guardian cards for this playthrough. We're going to be trying out Finn Edwards with the new cards. I'll take that and Thieves Kit. If you're not familiar with those, I'll just pop them up on the screen really quickly. I'll take that. It's that fast when you successfully evade a humanoid enemy or successfully investigate, you play an asset from your hand, reduce the cost by X for X, the amount you succeed by, attach, I'll take that to the asset, and it gains illicit. And then the Thieves Kit is a three cost hand asset with six uses with a investigate using agility instead of uh, intellect for the investigation, and if you succeed, you gain a resource. I won't go too in depth on Finn's individual card choices beyond that. The list is posted here now. 21 or bust is I'll take that and lock picks are the Thieves Kits. You know, the 25 auto works very well with his evasion. Peter Sylvester and track shoes get him his uh, agility stacked up pretty high. And to me, the rest of this is just kind of good stuff Finn choices. Um, so that's what I've got for Finn. And for Roland, I'm looking at Runic Axe, the four cost asset, uh, double hand slot, customizable. The first customizable card I'll be using. It's got four charges. You replenish one at the start of each round. And you have a fight action, you get plus one combat for the attack, and before the attack, you can spend any number of charges to imbue the axe with that many different inscriptions. And you get accuracy for plus two to your attack, or power for plus one to damage. And then you also get extra ones from your upgrade sheet down here. Uh, the deck is going to have in the thick of it, which is immediately going to grab three uh, uses, uh, sorry, three XP into Saga, making it a level two card, where you replenish two of the runic axis charges at the start of each round instead of only one. So this is going to be really easy for me to take, like, two plus three attack plus two damage swings a turn, which I think is a pretty reasonable weapon. Uh, and then beyond that, I'm also trying out fighting lessons. Um, I know this one kind of got a little panned on release. Uh, people weren't too keen on it. Uh, personally, I think the art is just, like, hilariously goofy looking. Like, the kid's... Like, where is that rifle landing? Where is this kid's other hand? Like, he's about to break his sternum. Anyways, um... But to me, uh, this card reads fine, and a lot of people were saying, ah, no, this is junk. And I think that, you know, between Roland and, and Finn in particular, because Finn can do combat and evasion, uh, and the fact that Finn can very easily split up from Roland, and Roland can kind of be self-sustaining as well, uh, I think that this actually is, is the kind of uh, the place to test whether or not this card is going to work or not. Uh, because if it doesn't work here, then I, I don't know where it's going to work. And again, the rest of the deck list is popped up here. I... I kind of just think that, again, this is just like a good stuff Roland deck. Uh, the Winchesters are the Runic Axe with the 3 XP I spent on Saga, like I said. The Leaderships are through Fighting Lessons. Uh, so I've got a single 45 Thompson as an extra weapon. Uh, I've got the Roland Special, obviously, as the fourth weapon. Two Art Students and two Lab Assistants for kind of that rotating cast of allies with Sanity Soak. Two Safeguards. That might be a mistake, and I'll probably upgrade out of them, but, um, you know... Following Finn around with track shoes is actually kind of nice, but Finn does have that one lone wolf, and you might not want Roland following him so much. We've got two cracked case and emergency cash, and two stand together for a bunch of money on the hunts prepared for the worst. 
working a hunch, shortcut, you know, normal stuff, daring, deduction, overpower, trying to crush some investigates and some, and some combat. Just for reference, when I imported these into the app, I did get a Cursed Follower on Roland, and I did get Hypochondria on Finn as our random basic weaknesses. The Eve of War. Yet across the gulf of space, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic regarded this earth with envious eyes and slowly and surely drew their plans against us, and early in the 20th century came the Great Disillusionment. H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds. Uh, the three scenarios included our first contact, Phobos and Deimos, and the Thirsting Void is based on a book by H.G. Wells and the radio play ad adaptation by Orson Welles the f and further adapted to the mythos of Arkham Horror with a few other connections and tweaks. So we're going to be playing on standard. I've assembled my decks. The standard bag looks fairly standard here, right? Plus one, two zeros, three minus ones, two minus twos, a minus three, a minus four, two skulls, an elder thing, an auto fail, and an elder sign. Pretty normal stuff. It all began as a seemingly unimportant event in late October. Astronomers across the globe, from France to Java, all reported bright flashes of incandescent gas from the surface of Mars, moving towards Earth at great velocity. Though never seen in human history, this phenomenon repeated each following night with astounding regularity. Theories ranged from volcanic activity to meteor showers, but the scientific community would not come to any definite conclusion while the press relayed the mystery to a fascinated public. Then, on the evening of the 30th of October, came the thing. A flaming object plummeted to earth with a green flash that was visible for hundreds of miles, impacting on a small farm in Grover's Mill, New Jersey. It was thought at first to be a meteorite, though onlookers discovered an enormous metal cylinder half buried in the impact crater and smoldering with intense heat. A local farmer named Wilmoth endured a storm of press attention as the main eyewitness of the cylinder's descent, but his layman's perspective only led to more questions. The reporters soon shifted their focus to Professor Richard Pearson from the local Princeton Observatory, who had made the trip to observe the strange object for himself. His conjecture was broadcast to the nation by radio, until sudden motion from the crater once again diverted the reporters' attentions, but this time to their horror. The cylinder rapidly unscrewed, and with painstaking slowness, the Martians emerged in all their grotesqueness. Bulky, with slick skin, tentacle appendages, and lipless V-shaped mouths, the aliens terrified the onlookers into a quick retreat. The Martians made no pursuit, but instead began to assemble strange machines with deliberate method, working slowly but tirelessly. The frightened spectators debated among themselves what to do about these grotesque creatures. And finally, a few of the more optimistic men approached the crater with a white flag of truce. The Martians responded by employing one of their newly constructed devices without delay. A parabolic object lifted out of the crater and projected a ray of invisible heat at the advancing party, immolating them in mere moments, and erupting the landscape around them into wildfire. What remained of the crowd fled in abject terror as the Martians returned to their machinations. There could be no doubt that the monstrous visitors were invaders instead, and war was their only goal. Scenario 1. First Contact You and your friends had listened to the radio broadcast of the events unfolding at Grover's Mill. War with these alien invaders is inevitable, but you know that this will not be a conventional war by any means. The world is unprepared both physically and mentally to deal with such an alien threat. With your experience in the weird and arcane, you may be the only help of repelling the Martian menace. As with any war, information will be the deciding factor. Information you can only obtain by observing their tools, tactics, and weaknesses up close and in person. You work through the night to prepare as much as possible, delaying sleep until you're safely aboard the midday train from Arkham to Princeton. It is well after sunset when you finally arrive at Princeton Junction where uniformed guards of the state militia sternly turn away journalists, photographers, and other busybodies with the same tired repetition. After the initial attack, the militia locked down the site for the public's protection, but they've been waiting on orders from the top ever since. You suspect that if you submit to their authority to get access to the crash site, you'll be subjected to the same tedious protocol. However, the alternative is slipping past the cordon and possibly provoking the militia to investigate at a faster pace. In either case, there's just no telling how long the Martians will be content to stay secluded in the crater. You consider carefully whether to approach the guards and convince them of your talents, or slink off into the woods to begin your own covert investigation. The investigators must decide. Choose one. Getting the militia's assistance will be worth jumping through a few hoops. We'll convince the guards that we can help. Or, the Martians aren't going to wait on militia protocols. We'll sneak onto the site and conduct our own investigation. 
Well, I think Finn and Roland together as a group are going to be the kind of guys that are not going to be going along with the militia. Obviously, Finn has his own issues with authority, but Roland, despite being, you know, like an agency or I guess a Fed um, employee, uh, knows and understands the kind of bureaucracy that surrounds this kind of stuff and and knows that if we need to get answers quick, that waiting on the militia protocols is going to be too much of a delay. So the investigators are proceeding without permission, and we're going to be adding one cultist, excuse me, one tablet token to the chaos bag for the remainder of the campaign. And again, as always, it's mostly set up in Tabletop Simulator, but I will read a little bit of this to make sure that everything's in order. We gather all the cards from the encounter sets. Again, that's all done. The investigators are cooperating with the militia. During this scenario, use Act... Uh, no, it's not that one. We're proceeding without permission. And so we use Act 1, Perimeter Breach, and Act 2, First Hand Account, Version 2. Remove the other Act and Act 1 and Act 2 from the game. Also, gather the Circumvention Encounter set, indicated by this icon. And that's all set up over here by the agendas. The act, I've dragged out the Perimeter Breach, and First Hand Account, Version 2. Comes with the Cultist token, the Tablet token, and we've got our Circumvention. We set aside the second crash site, both copies of Fighting Machine, and we put the Princeton Junction, Millstone River, Plainsboro Field, the State Militia Field HQ, and Wilmoth Farm locations into play. And we begin play at Princeton Junction and shuffle the remainder of the encounter cards to build the encounter deck. I guess that includes the Circumvention encounter set. So first, though, before I go double-check, you know, setting up the uh, locations, let's draw our opening hands to make sure we're not kind of uh, cheesing any of that. So our opening hand for Finn is going to look like what? Not caught red-handed. Two twenty-five automatics. You can handle this one. Track shoes and a sleight of hand. So, I love the track shoes in the opening hand for Finn. I think, however, Finn is a bit more my investigator than my fighter, um, and so I'm probably going to just get rid of all of this combat stuff and maybe keep this. You handle this one um, in my back pocket. Okay, I'll take that. Might let me get this track shoes into play a little cheaper. That'll be really cool. Let's not forget to shuffle away that mulligan. And as for Roland, let's see what he gets. I forgot to turn the hands on. Let's go do that really quickly after I've drawn all five. Not much of a shuffle. The art student at the start is nice to see. Um, obviously, this cursed follower needs to be replaced, and I sent that to the wrong hand. It's a working hunch. Um, so I think that maybe just the crack the case... Or maybe a crack to the case in the art student is good. But I really am looking for a prepared for the worst or an runic axe. And I'm going to be taking quite a bit of time drawing if I don't happen to see them. Um, so maybe this is actually a full mulligan. Yeah, I think that this might just be a full mulligan. Because I have, I have quite a bit of economy in this deck. I do have a bunch of other economy cards. So we're just going to do a full mulligan and see if we can't get... Come on! Ah, no. We didn't get it. That's okay. I think we'll be able to recover all right from that. Um, we're fairly competent at fighting, and we can just get some progress in uh, by helping Finn on some investigates while we sit around drawing. So the board is going to look like this. We've got Princeton Junction. The guards hold their post apprehensively, almost as ig ignorant of the militia operations as the people they turn away. Say three shroud, two clue location. Choose and discard up to three cards from your hand to draw an equal amount of cards. Oh, hey. Um... Limit once per game. That might be really good for Roland to go find his weapon. Uh, the junction steadily empties of cars and civilians as the night draws on, and the noise from the Martian's crater amplifies. Let's see what we've got for an agenda. The impact crater. Sounds of hammering echo faintly, and bursts of green smoke rise steadily from the jagged crater by Wilmoth's farm. The Martians are preparing for war. All Martian enemies gain spawn Wilmoth farm. Perimeter breach. You decide that the Given the circumstances, you're better off trespassing. The malicious close-minded tactics aren't going to stop this alien threat, and you don't have the time to comply with orders from ignorant officers. However, observing the invaders' tactics without interference from the militia will be difficult. You have to figure out some way to get through their defenses without exposing their forces to the Martians. Each military location gets plus one shroud. Investigators cannot enter Wilmoth Farm. Uh, objective only investigators at State Militia Field HQ may spend the requisite number of clues to advance, which is two per investigator. We need four clues at the State Militia Field HQ. Double-checking the map, 
We have Millstone River here up from Princeton Junction. The State Militia Field HQ right there. So two more clues beyond what we've seen so far. Plainsboro Field and the Wilmoth Farm, which we currently cannot enter. Before we get going anymore, first contact. The skulls are minus ones, minus three. Instead, if you're resolving a test on a fire card, um, no cultist. It would have been if you failed to discard a card at random from your hand. Um, the tablets are minus three. If you fail, lose two resources. Okay. Uh, I think I'm glad I have that one in this scenario. I guess we'll see how that goes going forward. And the other thing is minus two, minus four instead, if you're at a cylinder location. And the cylinder location is Wilmoth Farm. Uh, presumably that is where the crash site is. Yeah. So uh, military locations currently have plus one shroud. So the state militia field HQ and Princeton Junction both have a bonus shroud. And that's what I'm looking at. So if we're looking at a four shroud here, I think my best bet maybe is to go first with Roland, play the safeguard and draw a couple cards. See if I can't see, uh, hit that uh, hit that gun. So uh, actually, you know, we'll do the card draw first. Okay, we get a Thompson. Mm, that's tempting to just take a resource and play that. Because, you know, right now, Finn... Yeah, you know, Finn has his evade. He's going to have five agility. Um, it might not be unreasonable to, to just say, yeah, okay. Um, I'm happy to play my safeguard and, and, and get the resources for this later. And you know what? Um, I think that is where I'm at. I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna go ahead and play the safeguard, and I'm going to take a resource. And that way I'll be at five. I can take a resource, play it next turn. Okay, so for Finn, we're going to go ahead and do a move, like I said. We're going to head up to the Millstone River, which is going to be a three-shroud location. Investigators at this location get plus two to all skills when resolving tests on fire cards. Black and marks from the Martian heat ray reach up to the banks of the ice-cold river, but no further. Uh, and Roland is going to safeguard with him. And then I think we're going to go ahead and do what? I think we're going to take a draw action with him. I'll watch this. Okay. Interesting. Um, and then I think we're just going to toss out and investigate. We're going to be at four against three. Let's get to uh, five, six. And let's get to seven with a deduction. And that'll be seven against three. A zero. We successfully evade. We play this track shoes for free. We get both of the clues off the location. Pretty happy with that as an opening turn. All right, upkeep for Finn. What does that get us? Come on, beautiful. Pickpocketing, okay, yep, super reasonable. And then an upkeep for Roland gets us an overpower. Yeah, feeling pretty good about that too. All right, first mythos phase. Let's make sure that encounter deck is shuffled. Let's do this. Finn gets. Charred bodies. Test three. For each point you fail by, either take a horror or choose and discard one card from your hand. Hmm. He has a lot more uh, horror soak than Roland does, and he also has a lot more healing in his deck. Um, and so I think we're just going to eat this on Finn, and we'll save this for something a little bit scarier or when it's actually threatening. So we'll just be one against three. Uh, that is a minus one. It is not a fire, unfortunately. I wish that had been a fire, because that... Uh, no, because that would have been a minus three, and then also a plus two, so it wouldn't have mattered. Um, but yeah, so we have to take our three horror or choosing to discard a card from our hand. Um, I'm kind of tempted to lose a watch this. Uh, I feel like that's more money than I really need, and then I'll take two horror, so that I can get a logical reasoning to heal that up later. And then for Roland, we get... The Unstable Soldier. Aloof. If there's a Martian enemy in an Unstable Soldier's location or a connecting location, he loses the Aloof and gets plus one fight. After you defeat the Unstable so Soldier, take a horror. If you are engaged with Unstable Soldier, test three willpower and parlay. If you succeed, discard the Unstable Soldier. Okay, so he's not doing anything right now to us. And fortunately, he's also not, like, adjacent to where the aliens are going to be spawning. And so he's not going to, like, lose Aloof and engage us anytime soon. Um, so that's kind of nice. So I think we're going to start with Roland. I think that Roland is going to take a resource and play his Thompson like I said he was going to. Um, I think that last action we're going to play the shortcut on Finn. Finn's going to scoot over. And we're going to reveal that location. Move an unengaged, non-aloof enemy once towards Plainsboro Field. If that enemy enters Plainsboro Field, it engages you instead of its usual prey group once per round. Okay, interesting. So we can lure people over. 
Uh, the plane affords a clear view of both the Martian crater and the nearby military operations. If you wanted, you could easily draw attention to yourself here. Cool. Uh, and we'll safeguard over with Roland. And I will say, I think that safeguarding over here with Roland prevents me from being able to trigger track shoes. And I think I'm all right with that, because we just want to get the clues off here, I think. Um, and so last action with Roland, I think we'll just draw a card. Okay, an emergency cash. That's That'll be good to help us kind of bounce back from having played eight resources worth of cards so quickly. And as for Finn, I think we're just going to go ahead and play the pickpocketing to get the value out of that. Um, make sure that we have that out for when we need it. And then I'll just toss two investigates into here, uh, two up. We get one clue. We get two clues off the location. Upkeep for Finn gets us another pickpocketing. Very good. And then upkeep for Roland gets us another overpower. Also pretty good. Two out of four doom. Next mythos phase for Finn. Caught in the crossfire. Test three agility. If you're at a cylinder location, it gets plus one in peril. If you fail, you must take two damage or put ca caught in the crossfire into your, play into your threat area. While it's in your threat area, you cannot take move or evade actions at the end of the round. Discard caught in a crossfire. Okay. I don't think two damage is too detrimental right now, but I am, I am, I am two up on this, so I, I think I just take it. Uh, that is a minus two because I'm not at a cylinder location, and so that's a success. And then Roland gets ooh, our first Martian. One, two, one, aloof. Increase the difficulty of all tests during re uh, revelation effects on a weapon or vehicle cards and fight attempts against vehicle enemies at its location or connecting locations by one. Ooh, that's going to be a very tricky effect to remember. And this guy spawns at the farm, so I don't have access to him right now. A gr big grayish rounded bulk the size perhaps of a bear was rising slowly and painfully out of the cylinder. As it bulged up and caught the light, it glistened like wet leather. One damage and one horror. Yuck. At least he's really easy to kill. Um, I guess that's probably they, their whole thing. <laughs> Is that their, you know, that's, that, that's part of the story, right? Is that they, 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 like, they, they like fall over from the flu. Um, but they have technology that surpasses us by, by leaps and bounds. So hopefully this uh, 45 awe Thompson is going to be doing enough work. But to the farm, he will go. Okay, so uh, this time we're going to go ahead with Finn first. We're going to move into the State Militia Field HQ. It's a three shroud location, four because of the plus one. Um, if we're proceeding without permission, he gets another plus one, so it's actually a five shroud location. Oh my god. Uh, during the upkeep phase, if the investigators are cooperating with the militia, state investigators at State Militia HQ may choose to draw one additional card gain one additional resource. Ooh, shit, that's a really good effect. I had four clues and one VP. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Uh, safeguard brings um, Roland down. Kind of wish we'd kept that intel report with Finn. I would have, if I'd have known that this was going to have four clues on it, I definitely would have done that, but that's okay. Okay, uh, and so for Finn, I think we're going to go ahead and just play the other pickpocketing, because having both of those, I was going to be insane. Um, and I think we're just going to go ahead and spend our clues to advance uh, and get this first act out of the way. Forward march. From careful observance of the mil militia's routines, you've discovered that the patrol patterns are constantly shifting with new orders delivered via radio transmission. You manage to find a window of opportunity to slip into the field, HQ undetected, and access the radio station while the operators are otherwise occupied. The fresh orders are written out hastily on a scratch pad in front of the equipment, which you edit slightly before making good your escape. By the time the new orders are patched through, you're ready to capitalize on the brief gaps in their adjusted patrols. First Hand Account, version 2. Having gained a bit of leeway for your investigation, you can finally focus on assist, uh, assessing the invest, invader's strengths. You will have to rely on your own talents as you prepare your recent findings with the Martian weaponry. If you are engaged with a Martian enemy, test 6 Intellect. If you succeed, move one of your clues to the current act. The test gets minus X difficulty, where X is the engaged enemy's fight value. This op action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. If there are two clues on the current act advanced, so I have to pass that test twice. Now, I no longer have plus one shroud uh, on the middle of two military locations, and I also need to have clues when I do this. So this is um, this is gonna be interesting, and this doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity, so it's 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 just something you can do. But you do have to be engaged. Okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting and probably a little tricky. Okay, so then I'm looking at one more action left on Finn. I think that I'm probably just drawing a card. Uh, smuggled goods. Okay, yeah, smuggled goods. 
that's perfectly fine. I think for Roland, we're probably like drawing a card and then playing an emergency cash. And then last action, playing a lab assistant to draw two more cards, another safeguard and an art student. Okay, interesting. So we got a bit of soak. We now have two free clues. Gonna cost a lot to get them, but we do have two free clues going on there. Okay, feeling pretty good. Spare icon as well. Um, upkeep for Finn, we get a manual dexterity. Upkeep for Roland, we get a deduction. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I think that we can actually just toss the working a hunch in a deduction. Ooh, that's gonna be tricky, okay. Yeah, because we can't toss both from Roland, but I still think the deduction is, is, is gonna be handy for Finn. We're up to three out of four Doom. Martian still spawn at the Wilmoth Farm. And encounter card for Finn is caught in the crossfire again. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and commit the manual dexterity to this just to be at like seven against three. Um, we're not at a cylinder location, but I'd like to just get a bit deeper into my deck. Uh, plus one. Okay, sweet. So draw a card. It's Finn's trusty. That's going to be useful to have. And then for Roland, we get military interference. Put it into play next to the agenda deck. The first test performed during each investigator's turn gets plus one difficulty, and other investigators cannot commit cards to that test. At the end of the round, discard military interference. So. I forget uh, cards when I have to put them next to the agenda deck, so what I'm going to try to remember to start doing from now on is putting these in the threat area of the active player that I'm playing, and then I'll just like shift it over, right? That way I don't, um, hopefully I don't forget about it as much. So I think I'm going to go ahead with Finn first again. We're going to go ahead and move, and we're going to move into the Wilmoth Farm. And we're going to reveal that. While there's at least one Martian enemy at this location, it gets plus two Shroud. Okay, so we want to deal with this guy. And I think we already wanted to deal with him, because that ability sounds like it's going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, so we're definitely moving here, and we're definitely having uh, Roland um, safeguard in. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and play a Smuggled Goods. To uh, No, there is already enemy at our location, so we can't do that. Okay. I could, like, engage Evade and try and get a double pickpocketing off for two draws, which is, like, kind of funny to do, but, like, it gives me a spare action. So uh, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to engage him, and then I'm going to evade him using Finn. So I'm going to be at five against one. Uh, we're even going to put the watch this into this and spend my three resources for, um, what is it? Is that it? Yeah. For six resources there. So we'll be at uh, six against one. Minus two. So I get my six resources back. And he's evaded, and I get my two card draws from pickpocketing. Boom, boom. The intel report is, like, precisely what I was looking for off that. He's evaded back at the location. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and play my smuggled goods, which is going to look at the top nine cards of the deck for an illicit card and add it to hand. Let's go ahead and get to that thieves kit. I think that's a little bit better than the 25 auto. It's going to help me sustain a whole bunch of investigates at a little bit higher of a skill value. Uh, and because I searched my deck, I shuffle this back in to the deck. Now, of course, I did just talk about moving the mil military interference around. And um, if I had remembered that I had plus one difficulty to that test, <laughs> I, I might have not just done that with only the watch this. I might have put in another icon. But hey, you know what? Who, who am I to not mess up rules slightly in my videos? Um, it's a learning exercise for everyone. So I'm going to go ahead and engage. That puts this Martian technician in front of me. Um, I could just try punching him two up with a, with an overpower, but I think that I'd rather just shoot him with the Thompson. So I'm going to be at four, five, six against two, which is like exactly where you want to be. Minus two, that is successful. He is dead. We trigger Roland's ability to discover a clue at the location. And now we're looking at a location with three clues left on it, and it's back down to two shroud. So I think, think, think that we're in a good position to get a lot of these clues back off. And I think we're going to be parked here with Roland for a little bit. And I think that that's great. And I think that I might even, I guess I, I do have a question of like, how much am I willing to put into an investigate on this? If Finn can pick them up really easily with free actions versus Roland being able to pick them up with um, putting a lot of effort into it, right? Like, am, am I happy to just let Finn go buck wild and try and 
toss three investigates in to get three clues? Or do I put a lot of effort from Roland in to try and get two clues on one action? You know what I mean? And I think that ultimately, like, I kind of want the working hunch over here, and I kind of want the intel report over here. That's three of those clues. I'm happy to let Finn pick these up. I think that works. So then that means last action. I'm just going to take a resource because there is still runic access to play. I do need to play the working a hunch. I probably want to play the art student to get that other clue off the uh, military HQ. So we'll do that. Get an upkeep from Finn. Perception. And an upkeep from Roland to get us another working a hunch. Very nice. We get to discard the military interference. We're up to four doom. And we advance. The tripods. The harsh sound of metal grating against metal scratches through the air as an enormous vehicle rises out of the crater. It steadies itself on three snake-like legs and pivots towards a militia embankment, aiming a device mounted underneath the main chassis forward. Another sound begins to emanate from the tripod, the unmistakable reverberation of the Martian's heat ray, and the soldiers erupt into fire with horrible screams. There can be no safe distance from the cruel invaders now. Spawn one of the two set-aside fighting machine enemies at Wilma Farm. Shuffle the other copy of Fighting Machine into the encounter deck. Losing ground for Doom. With the first of their war machines completed, the Martians begin to spread out from the crater. However, despite their power, the power at their disposal, the Martians move cautiously, strategically even, as though they were waiting for something. So let's see what that fighting machine is. So this fighting machine is a massive hunter. It's plus one uh, health per investigator. He's a 433. So he's a 453. Uh, if there's a fighting machine in a victory display, fighting machine gains alert and retaliate. Wow, okay. 2-2, uh, two, two, victory 2. A monstrous tripod higher than many houses striding over the young pine trees and smashing them aside in, in its career. A walking engine of glittering metal. Victory 2. Uh, okay, so we're probably going to be needing to use that ability on the act on this guy. Uh, let's see how that turns out after we pull our Mythos cards. Searchlight Beam. If there's a copy of Searchlight Beam in your threat area, gain search. Otherwise, test three. If you fail, take a horror and put Searchlight Beam into play in your threat area. All Martian enemies gain prey, bearer of Searchlight Beam. Forced at the end of your turn, if there are Martian enemies at your location, take a, uh, take a horror. Double action to discard it. Um, we're going to try to pass this, but I'm not going to be too fussed if it doesn't work. Uh, so five against three. Minus two. Easy game, never punished. Uh, and then Roland gets Choking Smoke. If there's no copy of Choking Smoke in your threat area, put it into play in your threat area. Otherwise, again, Surge. Forced, after you draw a fire card, lose an action. Test three, if you succeed, discard Choking Smoke. Okay, so that's going to be... That's going to be um, something that Finn needs to test off of Roland. Now, the nice thing is, since he's massive, I am engaged with him. And this is only going to be a test to intellect to place one of my clues on the act. So I think what we're going to do first is we're just going to use Finn. We're going to go ahead and evade him. Five against three. He doesn't currently have alert. No, oh, we'll use this action, obviously. Uh, he doesn't currently have alert. So five against three, I'm super happy to just try a couple times. Uh, that is a minus four, which fails. We'll try it again. Minus one. That succeeds. We get two card draws. One, two. And then he's evaded. He's not going to be engaged with either of us, but we can get his damage down a little bit. Maybe we could walk away if we really need to. I don't think we need to. Um, but this does have a big high shroud right now, which is a bit of a bummer. But what we can do is we can sleight of hand into play a flashlight. And we can do two investigates at four against two. And I can do the first one, six against two. Zero, that is successful. I get a clue, I draw a card from Perception. And the other one, I'll try again, an auto fail. That's fine. Um, sleight of hand, at the end of my turn, that asset's still in play, return it to your hand. Boom, good stuff, good stuff. And now importantly, like, we have a clue put onto the Martian, or to, to put onto the act from, from the Martian. Um, and so, Roland, if you draw a fire card, lose an action. So I think I need to do as much damage to this guy as I can this turn. So we're going to go ahead and use uh, Roland to shoot him with the overpower. We're going to be at four, five, six, seven, eight against four. 
first action. Minus one, that's two damage. Well, I'll just put this right here, and I'll move it up in a minute. And also a card draw. Um, and then we'll pull that attempt again with the other overpower. That's another two damage, so he's got one health left. And a card draw. Ooh, the daring. Okay. Very good. Very, very nice. Okay. Um, and then... I think I might... Yeah. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Boom. Grab both those clues. Uh, no. No, no, no. Grab one of those clues. Only grabbing one, because next turn when I kill him, I get the other one. Right? Don't need to worry about it. Uh, but last action, because we did that. I think I'm going to go ahead and just take a resource. Again, there's still stuff to play. I've got two art students. I don't think I need a second safeguard. That's probably not necessary. And in fact, I don't even think a second safeguard works like in conjunction with um, track shoes. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Okay, so upkeep on Finn gets me the smuggled goods back. We are not above hand size. That's nice. And then upkeep on Roland gets us an on the hunt, which I'm going to seriously consider using for another Mego. Or not another Mego, excuse me, another Martian. Um, just because I wouldn't mind pulling one out of the deck. Ooh, but no, 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 you know what? There might be a lot of those... Um... Okay, so I need to use the Daring on the fight against the, the, the tank, but I want to use it after I've done the Intellect test, right? So we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. Um, we've got one out of four Doom... Keeping in mind that this guy is ready. And our encounter card for Finn is the Handling Machine Hunter. After it attacks you, place one of your clues on your location. Okay, so I think that's a good argument for not using... Um, <clears throat> not using uh, On the Hunt for Roland. So, Roland, what are you going to do? You're not going to use On the Hunt. You're just going to draw an encounter. Retaliate. If an engaged investigator has a copy of Searchlight Beam in his or her threat area, Militia Sentry gets plus one evade and alert. Okay, interesting. Interesting. This just got tricky. Okay, so I think that Finn probably has to do an, an evade on this handling machine. Neither of them have alert. Yeah. Let's think. Let's think, think, think. I guess the big thing is that, like, I really want to get a clue move to the act off of this fighting guy, because it's, this is the easiest time this test is going to be. It's only a test two right now. And so I could, like, commit maybe smuggled goods and the thieves' kit. That's not unreasonable. I've got the intel report and the art students to kind of finish off the other location. Yeah, I think I'm going to try that out. I'm going to try that out first. I'm going to try out I should do an evade first. Why would I not do an evade first, right? If I do an evade first, I might be able to trigger both of my pickpocketings and get some extra icons. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to evade the handling machine first and be five against three. Let's go. Um, yeah, let's just go six against three. Yeah, because six against three, right now we're looking like this. Six against three is two more two more icons. And and I, I'm okay with that risk. A zero. So we succeed. We get two card draw. Ready each enemy at your location or connecting location. This is after you've evaded. So I evade him, and then I ready him, and then no one moves. So unfortunately, uh, the shovel's back into the deck. But what I can do is put this onto Roland if I wanted to. And do I want to do that? I think the answer is no. But that was one pickpocketing. Um, so he's he's ready. Um, and I guess now there's no downside to doing the other one. The hypochondria. Okay. Uh, I say no downside and I'm immediately punished. Which is, you know, probably my own fault. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Okay. So let's get an evade off on this guy again. I'm just going to go two up. Yeah. he's ev So he is evaded now. Now I've got two actions. We're going to try and get four against two. Four against two for this test here. If we're engaged with a Martian enemy, we can test six minus four difficulty. 
So we're going to go ahead and commit the Thieves Kit and the Flashlight to be six against two. Two. We move the clue to the act. Puts that up there. Um, and then last, I think that we're actually going to go ahead and... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and try this out. Um, putting the 45 auto out fast. And then shoot that guy that we just evaded a moment ago. Um, five against three. And let's commit the fighting lessons to be seven against three. Boom, that's uh, minus four, so that's two damage onto that guy. Like so. And now Roland gets his maniac turn in which he attempts to kill as much as he possibly can. So we're going to go ahead and shoot with the 45 Thompson and a daring at the, um, the big Mac. Because uh, I can afford to have him die now. Uh, so we're going to be at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Plus 1. It's successful. Very good. So he goes up to 6 damage. Tosses him into the victory display. The next one's going to have alert and retaliate, unfortunately. But that is 2 VP. Goodbye, kind sir. Uh, and then we're also getting, of course, the clue off the location from having killed an enemy. Uh, and then we can attempt to shoot this malicious sentry. Which I'm a little bit bummed about... Because I'm only going to be 6 against 3. Um, but I could commit the on the hunt for that. And I think I will. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and, and use the last ammo with the, with the on the hunt committed to be 6 against 3. Minus 1. He's dead as well. Because he takes 2 damage from that. Very good. That's 2 attacks in. And then the last action, unfortunately, I think I kind of just have to card draw. Be prepared for the worst. Okay. A little slow. But we are a decent way through the deck. We've got 15 cards left. We'll have 14 after upkeep. It's a pretty good shot of finding one of the two runic axes. Uh, I did forget at the end of the... Oh no, this is uh, after you take damage, you take direct horror. So this is not uh, an end of turn. I was thinking it was internal injury, but I didn't forget that. Uh, so we get an upkeep on Finn, which gives us another track shoes. We're going to have this guy re-engage Finn, because I feel like that's a bit um, less risky than him re-engaging Roland right now. And then Roland is going to upkeep into... Ah, he's special. Okay, so we get that at least for now, as a holdover. That's really good. Two out of four Doom. And a counter card for Finn is another military sentry, but he's pretty easy to evade, so that's not a big deal. And then for Roland is failing defenses. Peril. This is a um, fire card. I have to lose an action after I draw this. Uh, you must choose one. Place one Doom on the furthest margin enemy. Take a direct damage or a direct horror, or test four or fail four. If you fail, take a direct take one damage and one horror. Um, so I think I'll test the willpower and just kill off the lab assistant. I feel like that's the best. I could place the doom on the handling machine and have it, and have it be like kind of free but not fully free. But I think I'd rather I think I'd rather just do the test than have the lab assistant get killed off um, rather than take anything direct. Yeah, because I, I want to play the art students anyway, so yeah, we'll do we'll do um, we'll do that. Minus one, so we fail. We take one and one, and we'll just get the we'll like the lab assistant killed. Okay, and then I lose an action. Okay, over on to Finn. Um, let's go ahead and evade this guy first. We're gonna be at let's use this action. We're gonna be at um, a five against two. There's three up. That is a minus one, so he's evaded. Let me do a pickpocketing and a pickpocketing. Okay, very good, very good. And then we'll evade this guy with the manual dexterity being 7 against 3. Minus 1, he's evaded. And we're looking like this with two actions left. They, this guy doesn't hunt, and I don't know that I need to come back here. This guy does hunt, but like, I think I have enough time to get over here and get as many of the clues as I can. So rather than spending a bunch of time and effort fighting these guys, I'm going to leave this guy behind, and we're going to get out of here. So we're going to take a move action with Finn, and we're going to safeguard with Roland. And then we're just going to go ahead and do what? The intel report is a thing that I'm looking to do the most, and so I'm just going to do it. Four resources, two clues. As for Roland, I think we're going to play the Prepared for the Worst. 
search the top nine cards. One, two, three, four. There it is, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Add a runic axe to hand. Put the rest of these... Uh, put the rest of these back into the deck. Um, and I think we're just going to play it straight up. We're just going to play it. And so now I've got this pretty kick-ass weapon that's going to sustain me for the rest of the scenario, I think. Uh, again, I have the SAG upgrade, so it gets plus two charges at the start of each round. So I can either swing at five for two damage a whole bunch of times, or I can swing for seven at two damage twice a turn. Um, which I think is pretty good. I, th I think that's th I think that's pretty kick-ass. So yeah, these guys are going to ready over here. Um, we're going to get our upkeeps, which is going to be Peter Sylvester, who I would really like to get on the blade just to get that extra agility. And then another prepared for the worst. I'm did I forget to shuffle that? Let's like just double check. Uh, no, I definitely did not forget to shuffle that because cover up was not among those cards. Okay, three out of four doom. There is another agenda underneath this, so we're not like too pressed. Let's see what we get for Finn. It is Sweeping Heat Ray. Test three for each point you fail by. Either take a damage or lose a resource. Okay. Uh, so we're just five against three. Uh, and we're not going to commit anything to this. Uh, I could commit the track shoes. But I'm good on damage. Um, no, but I, I don't really want to take a damage. Because then I have to take a direct horror. So let's go ahead and commit the track shoots. And be uh, six against three. Minus one. Succeeded it anyways. And then Roland gets... Ah, the other fighting machine. Hunter Massive... Ton of health. When it's in the victory display, it gains alert and retaliate. Uh, when there's another one in the victory display, excuse me, it gains alert and retaliate. So that does bugger up the plans a little bit, because now this is a bit scarier. And I also means that I have to do a big commit on the evade with Finn, which I'm going to do. Um, but I'm scared about these pickpocketings hitting uh, caught red-handed and us being absolutely buried in enemies. It would burn his version, his his copy of Caught Red-Handed, but um, it doesn't seem like a great idea for me to do right now. So I think that we're just going to go ahead and evade it five. We'll use this one. Five. I already have a weapon in play. We're going to go six, seven. I can get this back with smuggled goods if I really need it. Uh, six, seven to evade this guy. Minus three. I'm uh, sorry, maybe even minus one. I don't remember. Point being, he is evaded. I'm not going to trigger the pickpocketing because I think I'm okay right now. I'm going to go ahead and play Peter Sylvester. Uh, no, I do not have the resources to play Peter Sylvester. Um, I'm thinking about getting rid of this hypochondria. Since I can't play Peter Sylvester. The other option is to just take a couple of shots in with the AUG. Uh, 25 auto. Actually, yeah, I kind of I kind of love taking a shot with the 25 auto because then I can kill it this turn. Yeah, no, I like that. And there is something to keep in mind here. Um, this guy has lost to Luth and has fight <laughs> plus one fight. Um, so if I, if I have to go here for whatever reason, um, he, he's going to engage me, right? But anyways, um, we're taking a shot with the 45, the 25 auto, excuse me. It's going to be um, a base 5, and I think we're going to go ahead and commit Roland Special to this to get up to 7. That'll make that a pretty unfortunate occurrence. We'll go ahead and use another shot, just one up. There's the hit. Okay, 2 damage onto him. Um, and then last action... <coughs> Excuse me, what would I like to do? I feel like I want to move away, but I'm a little concerned about what moving away means. So I think instead, I will just take a resource. I hope that's not a bad idea. Okay. So Roland's going to go ahead and swing with the Runic Axe, um, getting plus three to attack, plus one damage, seven against four. Um, you know, seven against four, that good enough? Well, he's well, he's exhausted. Yeah, I think it is. That's two damage. He's at four health, uh, four damage, one health remaining. Um, I could just do two attacks at plus one. So I'm gonna do an attack. Uh, sorry for only one damage because I only need one more damage to finish him off. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. The minus one, and he's finished off. Cool. And he is also off 
into the victory display. Doing, feeling pretty good about that. Also getting a free clue from Roland. And then I guess last action, we'll just go ahead and play an art student uh, to get the last clue off the location, which we are going to have to drop in like just a very moment <laughs> because of that guy hunting in, but whatever. So like I said, the handling machine is going to walk in. So he engages Roland. He hits for two damage, one two, and one horror. Goes on the art student. And then we place a clue back in our location. But that's okay, because when we kill him with Roland, we will get the clue back, right? So we get an upkeep with Finn, a sleight of hand. We get an upkeep with Roland, the other runic axe. Then we get our two uses replenished. Um, I believe that's at the end of the round. Is that what it is? At the start of each round. Okay, so at the start of the round. And then we advance the agenda. The second cylinder, a bright flash streaks across the sky, trailing green smoke as it plunges into a nearby pine forest. The impact sends out a shockwave that scatters birds, raises further militia alarms, and very nearly knocks you off your feet. Wilmot's interview from last night described this exact scenario when the Martian cylinder landed in his backyard. And almost exactly 24 hours apart, surely another wave of invaders has arrived. Put the set-aside second crash site into play revealed. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Martian enemy and spawn it at the second crash site. Shuffle the encounter deck if it was searched. So the second encounter site is up here. Second crash site, excuse me. Uh, it's a Victory 2 location with four shroud. Grover's Mill Cylinder. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Martian enemy and put it into play engaged with you. Shuffle the encounter deck if it was searched. So we need to go discard, uh, go to the discard pile and encounter deck and get a Martian enemy and spawn it there. So I've gone ahead and spawned another one of these Martian technicians. It's that one, one, two, one, aloof. Increase the difficulty of all tests during revelation effects of weapon or device cards. And fight attempts against vehicle enemies at its location or connecting locations by one. Um, but we're all the way down here. We've got some time. we got to go up and get him. Um, and I don't think I mind, like, engaging him and killing him. Because Martian enemies are going to spawn on me if I get more Martian enemies. Anyways, we've got the Martians advance. With reinforcements from the second cylinder now supporting them, the Martians change tactics from careful strikes to overwhelming assault. Their machines surge forward, burning and smashing indiscriminately. At the end of the enemy phase, if there are any Martian enemies at state military... Mil excuse me, state militia HQ, place a doom on the agenda. Ooh, yuck. Okay, and we've got eight doom. Okay, an encounter card for Finn is going to be failing defenses. Place a doom on the furthest Martian enemy. Take a direct damage or direct horror. Or test willpower or agility four if you fail to get damage or horror. So I don't like any of those options, and I think the doom goes on that aloof guy. Because he's not coming this way, and we are going that way. So I think that's fine. And then an encounter card for Roland is Sweeping Heat Ray. Test three for each point you fail by either take a damage or lose a resource. Um, I am going to be losing an action after this is done because it is a fire event. Um, but yeah, we're testing two against three, and I'm, I just I have to fail that. Uh, I do not fail that because I get plus one from the clue I dropped. That is absolutely hilarious. I think that's the first time ever Roland's plus one has like made me pass with the... Elder Sign? That's awesome. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, okay, so we will... Um, will we go ahead with Finn first? Let me think about that. No, I think we go ahead with Roland first. So he's going to spend one charge off his Runic Axe to swing seven against three. Minus one. That finishes this guy off. We get the clue from the location. And so looking at the location, we've got one victory there, one victory there. We've got two up on the board here for me to get. And we've got um, two on two enemies in the victory display. So I think what we're loving to do now is heading up this way um, to try and get this gone. So we're going to go ahead and just take a move action with Roland to head up to the Plainsboro field. And then for Finn, we're going to go ahead and move up one with Roland. We're going to attempt to test his choking smoke off of him. Um, if we succeed, we get to discard it. So we're just going to be... Actually, no. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead, one, two, three, play uh, Peter Sylvester. And then we're going to test, test this off of him. So we're going to be testing six against three. Uh, minus three because it's a fire treachery? Yes. Minus three because it's a fire treachery still succeeds. Okay, so looking at the board one more time, just really quickly... This guy's not doing anything. This guy's not doing anything. This guy's not doing anything. So we're good. Upkeep for Finn gets us a you handle this one. Upkeep for Roland gets us a stand together and two charges on the Rudic Axe at the end of the round. Start of the round, I mean. Um, 
A Doom on the agenda. Counter cards for Finn. Military interference. Okay. I'm going to forget about that one again. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and actually just shove that over to Roland for, for, for Yux, I think, and get a resource. So Roland draws that, and he also draws another unstable soldier. Now, this guy does lose aloof because there was a Martian enemy at a connecting location. So he just... Um, I'm going to have to think about this one. I'm fairly certain that constant abilities that affect whether an enemy has aloof or not count for when they spawn. And I think he's forced to spawn on me. That being said, because this is an early work, the wording on this is actually just wrong. Um, right, because it says, if there's a Martian enemy at Unstable Soldier's location or a connecting location, colon, no, right, that's not correct. This is a constant ability because it's checking for a game state of with an if statement. So the colon shouldn't be there. And this should be a constant ability that's updating whether or not he has a loof even as he spawns. So right now he's spawning in on Roland as a 3-2-2, two, two, which is fine. Um, we can we can just deal with that. I think that I can just take a horror from killing this guy. I, I'm not too fussed about that. So I'm just going to go ahead with um, Finn first. I'm going to double action, get rid of my hypochondria. And then we're going to move up one location. That's going to bring us the second crash site. And we're going to safeguard with Roland to be up here as well. We've got this Mego guy hanging out, which unfortunately is increasing revelation effects on weapons and devices, but whatever. And then we're going to do Roland's turn. We're going to be attacking this guy who currently has four fight, I believe, because of this. And we're going to use two charges off Runic Axe to attempt a seven on four fight. Um, we'll just commit this prepared for the worst to try to get more off of that. Eight against... Uh, eight against four. Minus three. Cool. So he's dead. I take a horror. Let's just kill the art student off. Easy. Um, we're also done with the mil military interference. Uh, we're going to go ahead and spend two on an art student to gather a clue from the location. We're also getting a clue from the location for having killed that guy. That's the two clues off this location. And then last action, we'll just go ahead and play the stand together for two resources and two resources because um, I don't think I have a whole lot else to do at the moment. So now looking at the board, the only thing that we really have left to do is to finish off the uh, act, which is a reminder, you know, we need to test the big uh, intellect test um, and place a clue up here from one of our guys. So let's see if we can get that done. We can spawn one of the 333 guys and make that a fairly easy test, but not like a super cinch. So we get an upkeep on Finn for an I'll take that. Let me get an upkeep on Roland Banks for a lab assistant, and the military interference goes away. And I get my two charges at the start of the round on Rubik Axe. Two out of eight Doom. And then a counter card for Finn is going to be what? A Martian Technician, another one of these guys. That could be a problem, but it's okay. And then a counter card for Roland gets another Martian Technician. Okay, I think that we need to either like just try to engage one of them and get that test done, or we need to just sit here killing them for a turn, <laughs> which is painful, but it is what it is. Okay, so Roland's going to engage this one, um, and then he's going to use one charge off his Runic Axe, because that gets him to do plus one damage, and he'll be attacking at four with plus one on the Runic Axe. is five against one. Um, these guys, none of these guys are vehicles, so they're not boosting each other's difficulties or anything like that. Um, so five against one for two damage. Minus one. So this guy's dead, so we, at least we've got the Doom one gone. That's really good. I think last action, I'm just going to engage one of them. That might be really risky, but I feel like I'd rather not... I feel like I want to just get these guys killed and then get the, the test a bit easier. But I am going to try to pull it off with Finn right now. Finn is going to action one engage one of them. And he's going to be testing, what, four against a difficulty of five. He can get one, two, three, four icons into that to be eight against five. And we'll just commit the uh, deduction here from Roland to get nine against five. And that way we can spend a clue and get this finished if this works. So engage, try it out. Minus three. We got it. We advance the act. Half the battle. The machines the Martians pilot are unlike anything you've ever seen and far more dangerous than the weapons of conventional human warfare. 
Even the crab-like vehicles that they use for construction prove more than a match for the trained soldier. You finish your research around the same time that the nearby militia begins to fall back. Their makeshift defenses can't hold the Martian assault any longer, and they're quickly running out of both ammunition and the soldiers to use it. It's about time you escaped the line of fire with your findings. Place five per investigator resource tokens on state militia fuel HQ from the token bank. Full retreat. Whether or not you've entered Grover's Mill with the militia, they're leaving alongside you. The question that remains is whether you wish to help the beleaguered soldiers in their retreat or escape on your own as quickly as possible. Humanoid enemies get minus one fight and minus one evade. State Militia Field HQ gains double action, remove one resource from State Militia Field HQ. At the end of the investigator phase, remove one resource from State Militia Field HQ for each investigator present. If each undefeated investigator has resigned, advance. Okay, looks pretty reasonable. So we're just going to go ahead and evade this guy with Finn. Um, we're going to be at like uh, six against one, I guess. That seems super reasonable. Minus one, we will evade him, sending him away. Use a pickpocketing. Use a pickpocketing for the other one as well. Cool. Uh, and he's gone. And I think that we're just going to go ahead and move as well to kind of head back down. Uh, and we are going to just move the once again to help Roland keep up. Which is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. Okay, so uh, Roland takes one and one. Uh, we're just going to kill the art student off because we do have this lattice system we can play if we want to. And then we'll get an upkeep on Finn, it gets him a logical reasoning. And an upkeep on Roland gets him a fighting lesson. Cool. We get a charge back on the Runic Axe. Three out of eight Doom. And the encounter card for Finn is Charred Bodies. Test three for each point you fail by either take a horror or choose and discard a card from your hand. Pretty reasonable. Uh, we're just going to take this uh, auto fail. So one horror. And we'll choose and discard a Lucky Cigarette Case. And probably also this 25 automatic, because I don't think we're going to be needing that. And then Roland gets the Searchlight Beam. If there's a copy in your threat area against Surge, otherwise test three. So two against three, minus three. Um, we take a Horror and put it into play in the threat area. All Martian enemies gain Prey, the bearer of the Searchlight Beam. At the end of your turn, if there are Martian enemies at location, take a Horror, double action to discard it. Fine. So again, Finn, uh, sorry, this is supposed to have our 10 resources, right? So uh, that is actually the wrong thing. Five. Uh, there. That is the ten. And then Roland's going to safeguard in. Action one, and then action two, and three. We're going to take one resource off. And so I think we're going to do okay with getting them out of here. This guy is actually ready up here, obviously. Okay, so uh, Roland would really like to kill this guy in one hand, so we're going to go ahead and use the Runic Axe, attacking for seven against... Uh, sorry. Five against one, uh, and hope that that doesn't auto fail. Okay, that does not auto fail, so he's just dead. That's really good. Uh, also, this had a tougher um, test, but it didn't matter that that test was tougher. That's fine. Um, and then we're going to double action to remove a resource as well. So that gets rid of another one. And then at the end of the investigator phase, we remove a resource from that one uh, state militia field HQ for each investigator present. That's another two gone. So we're already down to six out of ten. I think we're going to get that full evacuation rather than needing to scoot off to Princeton Junction and resign. Okay. Caught red-handed by Finn. Uh, ready each enemy at your location or connecting location. Each hunter enemy at a location moves one location towards you. If no enemies move, this gets shuffled back in. Neither of these guys have hunters, so no one moves. And then Roland gets cracked the case. Totally useless. Four out of eight Doom. The counter card for Finn is... Caught the Crossfire. Test three. If you're at a cylinder location, it gets plus one, so we don't have that. Um, so we're at six against three, and we'll just toss that out. Succeed at it. And then for Roland, what do we get? We get probably probably a bad guy. Um, this gains Surge. Uh, otherwise, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so that's just gone. Uh, and then we get another unstable soldier who is aloof because there's no Martian enemies at his location or connecting locations. Cool. But he will he will drop on to us uh, if one spawns. Um, so we'll just do the reasonable thing, double action to remove one, and then, like, draw a card, I guess? Fine. Um, and then for Roland, we'll double action to remove one, and we'll... Um... Let me think... I think we'll just take a resource. Yeah. Okay, so that's 
those, and then two more from ending our turn there. And then an encounter card, excuse me, upkeep for Finn is going to be another caught red-handed, which gets burned. And then our upkeep for Roland is going to be a daring. That's fine. Five out of eight doom. Encounter card for Finn gets us a handling machine. Okay. And then an encounter card for Roland gets us a military interference. Interesting. The first test performed by each investigator gets plus one difficulty, and each and other investigators cannot commit cards to that test. So, let's think about strategy for the next little bit of turns. <clears throat> if uh, if if Roland doesn't kill this guy, he's going to be taking a horror, um, and that's not good, I think. By just standing here, we get rid of the other two passively. Also, this guy pops off onto one of us, doesn't he? Yeah, this guy pops off onto one of us. We're going to toss him onto Finn, and Finn's going to spend his turn evading these guys. Um, and the reason I want to do that is because I would actually really like for Roland to resign um, and not get cover up out at the last minute here. So Finn is going to go ahead and try to evade this handling machine first uh, with this action. And he's going to be four, five, six against three. We're not at a cylinder location. I'm happy with six against three. Minus one. That is successful. I get the evade. I'm going to trigger a pickpocketing. I'm not going to trigger the other pickpocketing. I did get a card draw out of that. I'm going to evade this guy. I believe I'm six against one. Yeah, six against one minus one evade right there. So six against one. That guy's evaded as well. And then I'm going to double action to remove one. That's going to get rid of this one. Uh, that first one, again, you know, here I am talking about doing that at the start of the campaign. <laughs> I forgot about the plus one to evading this guy, um, but it was still successful. I think I pulled a minus one on that, so that's fine. Um, I think if there are Martian enemies at your location. So I think I have to kill this guy with Roland. Um, which I'm not too keen on doing, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll be seven against uh, three. Okay, that's two damage. Uh, and then I'll spend one to be uh, seven against three for one damage. That's a minus one. So that guy is dead for sure. Uh, and that would have been a seven against four, I suppose, on that first attack. But, okay, fine. Two attacks. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Last action, what will I do? What will I do? I think I'll move to the resign location. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and move to this resign location. I think that's okay. Okay, Finn is going to get his upkeep. Caught red-handed. No one moves again. And then Roland gets an upkeep for a shortcut. Military interference goes away. Six out of eight doom. Sorry, one of these would have fallen off at the end of the investigation phase, which I did not do correctly. Uh, and then we get our upkeep for Finn is going to be a choking smoke. Goes into his threat area. Fine. And then for Roland, he gets another unstable soldier who uh, we do not have any Martian enemies, so he's not gaining, uh, sorry, losing a loop and gaining fight. So we're good. Uh, and so Finn moves over and resigns. And Roland resigns. And we're good. Uh, if each undefeated investigator has resigned, advance. If there are no resource tokens on state militia field HQ, whether out of compassion, strategic value, or just to spite the Martians, you assist the militia in their own retreat. The process delays with your own escape back a fair bit, but thanks to, in part to you, the soldiers are able to preserve valuable equipment and still live to use it. With any luck, their efforts will buy you time to actually use the knowledge of the Martians' methods. Resolution 3. The militia commanders attempt to regroup their disorganized troops on the nearby highway as you make your exit from Grover's Mill. Soldiers of all ranks are utterly baffled by their swift defeat by the Martians, but owing to your assistance, many of them survived with supplies to spare. You yourself might not have believed the overwhelming power of the Martian machines had you not fought them here tonight. To that point, one of the militia commanders approaches you, pressing you with questions on how you were able to combat the invaders so skillfully. You choose your words carefully, focusing your explanation on how the Martians can be outmaneuvered, to avoid a lot of needless questions about yourself. The officer's interview is short, but insightful, and not just for him. Through his questions, you can infer that the military tried tactics that you hadn't considered. Though they ultimately failed against the Martians, this information both focuses and reinforces your own findings tonight. The questioning is cut short by the sound of advancing fighting machines and the hum of the ghostly heat ray firing through the woods. At once, the militia scatter up and down the highway, 
with most soldiers funneling south towards the militia headquarters at Trenton. You prudently return north on the road you came by, both for better odds of avoiding the Martians and to begin work on applying your hard-won intel. In your campaign log, record that the militia made a safe retreat from Grover's Mill. Each investigator earns two bonus experience from their insights gained from overseeing the state militia escape. Proceed to Resolution 4. Through close observation in the heat of combat, you observe the key flaw of the Martian invaders. As powerful as their inventions are, the Martians themselves seem to have great difficulty in moving and working on their own. Their actions are slow, deliberate, and painful, perhaps working to overcome the difference in gravity between Earth and Mars. Their vehicles make up for this vulnerability, and each one has a specific function. The Martians behave like brains, changing bodies to suit their needs, but no single machine can perform all the tasks they need for their invasion. Whenever the Martians need to first construct a machine or transfer between them, they are at their weakest. It is an advantage you may have to press several times, for the night sky still flares with green flashes regularly, signaling the steady flow of yet more invaders. In your campaign log, record that the investigators discovered some of the Martians' weaknesses. Each investigator earns experience equal to the Victory X value of each card in the Victory display, which is going to be, I believe, 8, plus 2 from the bonus XP there. If there's at least one fighting machine in the Victory display, proceed to Resolution 5. Clutched under one arm as you make your retreat, you hold a gleaming fragment of one of the Martian fighting machines. These tripods are undoubtedly the most fearsome of the invaders' weapons that you have seen thus far, but they thankfully are not invincible. Their mounted heat rays are only as accurate as the Martian pilots controlling them, and with their extreme size, they have considerable blind spots. Your own victory over a fighting machine is proof of your authority in Martian matters, especially where the military and government have failed. Should you need to prove yourself to a doubting public, solid evidence will be a great help. In your campaign log, record that the investigators have proof of defeating a Martian tripod. Proceed to Scenario 2, Phobos and Deimos. And that's where we're cutting this one off. Uh, those decks perform pretty well, I think. Uh, Brunic Axe definitely is the weapon that I was thinking it was going to be, especially taking it in the thick of it and picking up Saga. Um, fighting Lessons was, like, fine. It was a flexible um, overpower or uh, manual dexterity to throw a pin, depending on whether he needed to fight or evade which is kind of the whole point of why I took it. Um, committing it from a location away didn't end up being relevant because of, you know, the way that safeguard operates with track shoes, but whatever, maybe I'll just upgrade the safeguards. Um, and then for Finn, I didn't play the Thieves kit, so I don't know what happened there. Um, kind of didn't need it. And uh, I'll take that. I mean, it got me that uh, track shoes for free, right? So can't hate that. Uh, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.